Good evening, everybody. It is, uh, sorry, I was going to say Monday, Wednesday, October 10th, 2018. This is the Wilmette Park District regular meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners. Uh, first on our agenda is a uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Abbott? Here. Commissioner Foster? Here. Commissioner Pelletin? Here. Commissioner Olvani? Here. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Commissioner Wolf? Here. Commissioner Anderson is absent, but you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda is the approval of minutes, September 12th. I'll move uh, to approve. I'll second. Are there any comments or corrections to the September 12th regular meeting minutes? Hearing none, may we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Pelletin? Yes. Commissioner Olvani? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. Minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda will be communications and correspondence. Um, there was an email in our packet from David Ford regarding the summer and how great the beaches were. So we thank you, thank him for reaching out to us. We also received quite a few emails regarding an access road uh, through Canal Shores. Um, ah, sorry, I'm trying to pull this up here. Um, there we go. Um, we received over 150 emails regarding that and correspondence, which was quite a lot for any communications for this meeting as of 3 p.m. this afternoon. Um, all the items received prior to noon on Monday are available online. The staff will be adding any communications that we received before 3 p.m. today to our online packet, and they have also been passed along to the board in the form of a printed packet that we have up here. In the interest of not killing trees unnecessarily, um, we made the decision not to print out the full packet for everyone in attendance this evening because it's like this big with all the emails and pictures and everything like that. So, but it's all online if anyone would like to see that. Um, that being said, are there any additional communications or correspondence from commissioners that they would like to discuss at this time? All right, hearing none, we will move on to our next agenda item, which is the recognition of visitors. Uh, we would like to let anyone know that would like to address us tonight that we ask you to come to the podium, state your name. Um, we ask that you confine your remarks to the matter at hand. We ask that you avoid any personal attacks or contentious statements and to be respectful of us and to one another. And we ask that you keep your remarks to three minutes at most, given that there's quite a large audience and probably a lot of comments that would like to be given. With that being said, um, is there anyone that would like to address us this evening? Yes, ma'am. Yep, come up and you can speak right into the microphone and give us your name and your address. Hi, my name is Leslie Shad. I'm, I live at 1110 Judson Avenue in Evanston. I also am a lead for Natural Habit Evanston and friends of um, Isabella Woods and have had discussions with Mr. Keefe about this issue, the road re request issue. Um, I, I just want to say that uh, I am from Evanston and I, uh, I, it is important to protect uh, trees and public space. There is not all that much public space in uh, Evanston and Wilmette, and uh, room for recreation is important, but I also want to say that I recognize that this may circle back to Evanston afterwards, and I'm still here. It's important to make the right decision for Wilmette, and I just want to encourage you to be brave and be courageous, and I further want to say as far as I know, um, we may not have MWRD votes on our side entirely to get this through yet. And I just want to encourage you, do, passing a resolution is fantastic and greatly appreciated. Um, sending emails is appreciated. But I, I just want to say it will be important, I think, to meet personally or to designate a representative to talk to MWRD commissioners individually about where they stand on the issue. I also want to encourage you to um, talk to the village of Wilmette and get and have them as well send a letter about this. And third, I really hope that you'll uh, discuss this with uh, Cook County Commissioner Sufferden and encourage him to ask, at least, I realize it's an independent agency, but to ask Cook County Highway Department to withdraw the uh, request before the um, October 18th meeting of MWRD. So those are the three things I'm hoping you'll, you'll you know, take this through the end. And with all due respect, thanks very much. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Carl Weinberger, and I am a Wilmette resident and on the board uh, Canal Shores. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
So Canal Shores is on the verge of celebrating its 100th anniversary, and it, some as you know, it's a unique gem uh, tucked between two supportive communities. And we have a focus on youth golf <coughs> and the lessons that go with that. And I want to point out that Canal Shores gets no tax money. It has a volunteer board, all of the members of which are from either Evanston or Wilmette. And in addition to golf, um, we have extensive community involvement through a variety of activities, including dog walking, bird watching, joggers, cross country running and skiing, uh, and music concerts. In short, Canal Shores provides a valuable green space uh, to the Wilmette community. Um, so I want to take a minute to talk about the 10th hole. Uh, the 10th hole is the crown jewel of our course. It's one of the most beautiful holes on the course. And what they're proposing to do is put an easement in there that is 60 feet by 300 feet, um, which would essentially make the hole unplayable. And for a golf course, to remove one of your 18 holes is, a, is, a, is an enormous issue. And keep in mind that it, we're a compact golf course. We don't have acres and acres of extra land from which to pull from uh, to try and replace a course. And we also want to point out that it's one of the most ecologically sensitive areas on our course. There are three wetlands, um, one of which would be entirely paved over um, by the proposed roadway. And the other two would be negatively impacted. And it's important to understand that even the construction of a roadway may end up killing nearby trees um, because of the root systems that would be impacted by this. And on the 10th hole, we have uh, a variety of trees that are over 100 years old. Um, and these are oak trees, and they're very valuable. Um, as the 100-year-old description would indicate, they're not easy to replace. So obviously, we don't want to see those damaged um, or, or killed. Um, so as you're aware, uh, the Cook County Department of Transportation Highways has requested the easement for a, to reach a privately owned parcel of land. It's a highly unusual request because the road would serve only four houses. And it's uh, extremely questionable from our perspective whether or not the Cook County Department would actually maintain this road or seek to foist it over on the village of Wilmette for maintenance purposes or e perhaps even convert it into a private road. The significance of which is this, they would be taking public land and converting it to a private use, um, which we think is unfair and wrong and should be stopped. Uh, so in short, the easement would ruin the 10th hole for golf, wreak havoc on an environmentally sensitive area, and remove green space um, from the community. So as some of you are aware, Canal Shores previously sent a letter to you guys urging you to strongly oppose the easement. So tonight we again urge you to stand up for the numerous local citizens who strongly oppose this easement um, by passing a resolution opposing the easement and communicating that to NWRD and also sending at least one of, the, of, of you to personally appear at the MWR meeting where they will be addressing this issue because we believe that will act, uh, add an extra dimension um, to your opposition. So we hope that you've heard loud and clear from your constituents about this issue, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have either tonight or going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi. I'm Joe Keefe. I am the representative from the Keefe Family Trust. Uh, I would like to address the resolution uh, particularly, and uh, I don't have general statements to make, but should I do that in the context of the agenda that you have this evening and address it at that point, or should I address the issues now? Now. We'd ask all comments Very come good. now, please. If I may, then, um, uh, the uh, resolution itself contains several factual errors, or at least um, the resolution hasn't been phrased in a way that may be as clear as it possibly could be. I point to the, the uh, whereas Cook County's Office of the in, uh, Independent Inspector General, the material in quotes, after receiving a complaint alleging improper mode of bribery involving Department of Transportation and Highways, uh, when they sought to acquire a parcel of land, this is language from the complaint itself. It's not language from uh, the determination that was made by uh, the Illinois Independent Inspector General. If I <coughs> that language that you have in yours reads, the preponderance of the evidence developed during the course of this investigation failed to support the allegations of improper motives uh, by DTH officials or any other county official in proposing an easement to MWRD. Um, so I, I 
it's concerning because the language that's contained in that portion of the resolution is actually from the complaint. It's not from the determination from the Inspector General. I would also point to the next passage, uh, concluded that the investigation failed to support the allegations of improper motives based in large part on represent representations from Cook County officials that its intention was only to request an easement so that the road could be built in order to generate property tax for the county, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I want to clarify that the, um, a private entity will not own this proposed roadway. Uh, the roadway is, the easement is being requested by Cook County based on the uh, lease agreement that you, that uh, both Wilmette Park District and then through that the golf course has with uh, Cook County. And um, so the, uh, it's not privately owned, it will not be privately owned. It's a public roadway. Uh, we have created the condition that the developer of the property will build the roadway and that the homeowners association in there will maintain the roadway going forward at no cost to taxpayers. But I want to emphasize that it, uh, it suggested here and then in other correspondence that that would be a private roadway. It will not be a private roadway. Um, I also will uh, remain in attendance if there's other questions that arise and I could uh, address those. I would uh, request uh, if it's possible to ask the uh, board to reconsider those passages uh, again, because they contain factual errors and uh, perhaps statements that are not as accurate as they possibly could be. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Karen Reinbold. I'm at 225 Laurel Avenue, right near Canal Shores. Thank you all for uh, your replies when I emailed you. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate your consideration this evening. My two points that I want to share with you, number one, are the Village of Wilmette faces a problem with stormwater management. We all know this. A lot of Northern Illinois does. And any time we're looking at wetlands and destroying those, we're taking away nature's way of handling stormwater. I can tell you as someone who spent way too much money getting stormwater out of my house near the golf course recently, it's not going to be a pretty picture for anyone who buys a house on land that was formerly wetlands. So please, for everyone's sake, try to protect the wetlands as best we can because it helps us all. And the se second thing I want to say, following up on the Canal Shores Golf Course representative, is it really is a community golf course. I don't play golf. No one in my family does. But every morning at the fifth hole, all the people who own dogs in the neighborhood hang out. My kids go out there. They talk to their 93-year-old neighbor who fought in World War II. And, you know, they, it's just a great opportunity to meet people and, and get together. And uh, it's, just, it's a really great community space. So I think we should preserve it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I'm Marcia Heater from 910 10th Street, Wilmette. I've spoken to you before, but this time I'm speaking uh, for Go Green Wilmette. And I believe we've sent you a letter. I just wanted to highlight some of the, one of the things that said, one or two of the things, and that is the Board of Directors of Go Green Wilmette urges you to oppose any continued requests by the Keith Family Trust or Cook County Highway Department to allow the building of a private road through public po property within the village of Wilmette. We, op we oppose the taking of public open space for private profit. In this case, the proposed road would not only remove public open space, it would also increase impervious surface at a time when our residents are being asked to pay attention to stormwater and how to treat it. We need every acre of permeable land we have in order to manage our stormwater, especially as climate change creates a larger problem. So we appreciate the support of Wilmette's open spaces and the way that you have supported it before, and I hope you will still continue to support it. Thank you very much for having this forum where we can speak with you and for the work you do. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Laura Nieder. I am a resident of 208 Golf Terrace, which is adjacent to the 10th hole of the golf course. And there are a few things that I wanted to mention today. First of all, within Golf Terrace, there are about 11 or 12 houses. Um, I myself have uh, two small children, and the th uh, three of the other residents also have two small children. So on the golf course, um, right on Golf Terrace, there are eight children that live on that street that are ages nine and below. 
And I think the, the best part of the street is the community that the golf course brings to us. So anytime you can always find the kids running around um, on the golf course, around the 10th hole, exploring the wetlands, and it is a really valuable community space. So we'd like to ask you um, to preserve that. The other thing that I um, would like to mention is <clears throat> um, an easement is typically granted when all other options have been exhausted. But um, the, Keefe, the Keefe Trust has owned that parcel of land for decades. And over that time, there have been the houses, um, there have been houses at the end of, the, of Golf Terrace that would have given access that have been for sale. One has been for sale, as one is for sale currently, one has been for sale six months ago. So the developer could have easily um, purchased the parcels and had a natural access. But um, unfortunately, he did not. And so while I understand that it might be a public roadway, um, if it is owned by Cook County, it will actually be for a private benefit. So I would like to echo um, some of the um, sentiments issued here today and ask you to strongly oppose the easement and to also ask a representative of this group to appear at the Metwater um, meeting on October 18th. Thank you. Thank you. S excuse me. Oh, sorry, I, have a quick question. I have a quick question. Yeah. So your, your home, when you think about Gulf Terrace, it's a, it's a cul-de-sac, yep. right? And some of the homes um, are adjacent to the golf course and some of the homes are adjacent to the um, to the, um, I guess that's railroad, the, the yeah. railroad tracks. Is your home, which side of the? Adjacent to the golf course. Okay, so is it mine? I mean, I walked the property um, on Sunday, yeah. Sunday or Saturday. It's my, it, it's my understanding that if your house is one of those homes, then this road would, would actually be on, uh, in your backyard, basically. Yes. So you would now have a road in front of your house and a road in the back of your house Yes. Additionally, though, I would have all of that water in my backyard. No, I get that. I'm just, I'm just trying to visual. I'm just, <laughs> just to be clear. I'm just trying to get yes. people to visualize yes. what that would look like. And it doesn't seem to me that there are any other houses anywhere in Wilmette that would actually have a public roadway, whether it's public both or private, sides. on both sides of the property. Yes, that is that's, a good point. That, that's a pretty staggering thought when I think about that. Yes. So if your lot is, I don't know how many feet deep your lot is, you're going to have, Not very theoretically, yeah. you're theoretically going to have ro a road on either side of you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Sigrid Pilgrim, and I'm actually a resident of the city of Evanston. Um, I would just like for your consideration to think of the following. Are you possibly setting a precedent by agreeing to use public property for the benefit of a private individual? Where would this precedent potentially stop? What if there are two or three single family homes somewhere in Wilmette adjoining one of the parks? coming up for sale, and a developer wants to build it, buy it, but in order to conform with whatever access needs there might be, he might need three or four or five feet of that park. So think about the potential consequences of the precedent that is going to be set. Even if the road may be owned by IDOT, there's really no reason for the general public to have a road that dead ends after 300 feet. So it's quite clear that it would really only benefit the people whose houses would be built there. And the reason the road needs to be built is so that more houses on that parcel can be built. So as I said, I'm not a resident of Wilmette, so my comments may not mean very much to you. but. You look at it within the broader concept of setting a precedent, potentially. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address us? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Eric Cardi Ficus. I'm a resident of 216 Golf Terrace, and uh, just a couple houses down from Laura, who spoke a few minutes ago. Uh, and I have two of the young children she's, she spoke of as well uh, who, who love to play in the, the green spaces and the, the snowy spaces in the winter. Um, 
but besides them, you know, we, we see neighbors from Evanston, from Wilmette, from all over crossing back and forth, you know, walking their dogs and, and cross country skiing and, and using these spaces, uh, uh, to putting them to great use, even when it's not golfable because there may be a, a duck pond from, from all the water that's collected there. Uh, you know, as was brought up earlier, it, it greatly concerns me that we might have a road in our backyard, a public road in our backyard, uh, just serving, you know, a few houses way down at the end. Um, and I, I also think about what happens in the winter when you know that road has to be salted and plowed, and, and all of this waste gets pushed aside and, and poisons the the grasses and the animals that are that are living there. So, I mean that's that's another concern as well with the the waterways and the, the wetlands. Um, so other than that, I, I didn't have a lot more to add besides what was said already. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. O'Reilly. I'm a resident of Evanston now, but a 37-year resident of Wilmette. Um, I just wanted to add um, that the golf course is a really important uh, migratory respite for birds in migration. Um, I help lead Go Green Wilmette uh, bird tours in the spring, and I am always checking along the golf course in the spring and fall for bird migrants. You can't believe how beautiful and wonderful the space is for um, giving these birds who are going to be uh, traveling thousands of miles to find respite. They come in over Lake Michigan and they come in from the lake and move inward. And those wetlands are really key habitat for them. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Commissioners, uh, my Glencoe neighbors, the Keefs. Uh, I'm Lori Morris. I live in Glencoe. I'm an advocate for op open space. I have nothing to add to what these people have said on this particular easement request except to encourage you to vote to support the idea that it not be uh, uh, allowed. I also wanted to add some information to the public record. The Cook County Recorder of Deeds uh, called today, and Mr. Wilson can confirm this, please, uh, sometime for your commissioners. The assessed value of the parcel that's proposed to be developed, according to Cook County uh, Recorder of Deeds, is $36,163. And I see this issue coming before all of you over and over again. Um, and my suggestion to the community of Wilmette, the Park Board, is to go fund me or allocate budget to buy this parcel for the assessed value and end this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Any, yes, yes, sir. My name's John Austin and I come from Evanston down, uh, down at the other end of the golf course. <coughs> Just an anecdotal uh, statement uh, about the birds. When we first moved into our place on the corner of Gerard and Isabella, we woke up to the most fantastic serenade of birds. There are very much fewer of them now, and I worry that uh, if any more woods that are here now are taken away, we're going to hear even less. So other than that, I think everybody has spoken wonderfully about against this project. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I take an advantage of the. I'm sorry, ma'am. Could you state your name and where you sorry. live? Doreen Price, and I'm in the seventh ward of Evanston, okay, and you. I'm on Rosalind Terrace. Thank um, you. So I'm I'm pretty nearby, and I've had three of my dogs start their puppyhood um, on the golf course in friendly manners. With the, the, it's the it's the most amus amusing and most beautiful place um, where animals and people interact, and no one kicks them or says that they don't belong there. In fact, they kick the golfers out who don't want the dogs there. <laughs> so it's a very beautiful community. Um, I can't imagine gentrifying it in any way, shape, or form. And a road, obviously, is gentrification. In terms of runoff, I know I'm having issues in Evanston because we also are concerned. 
uh, we kind of have our own wetlands near the lake. And if you're at the bottom of the hill, which I am, um, anybody who is challenging impermeable surfaces, it's very difficult to get a real good read as to what is going to uh, remedy the situation if you're going to generate what ro runoff where it's not supposed to go. So if you're talking about a street, someone has to uh, account for the fact that you are generating more runoff and these poor homes have to be protected. So I don't know if anyone's going to investigate that kind of money, but it's major. And we have one neighbor who's building a giant house and he's the most wonderful man and, and, and wife and they've been doing this for almost two years now, and they built their own, um, and I think every architect should come and visit this house and also another neighbor of mine, Kathy Grant, also who engineered and designed to get runoff, and the city, they went above and beyond whatever any city would ask of anybody to do. And this particular home, they engineered underneath the house, and I saw it as it was being built, owing on, because I love engineering, <laughs> and the, um, they had gravel and other things so that the runoff, the house would act like as if the house wasn't even there. They did that on their own at great expense. So those are the type of people we want moving into the area and anybody who doesn't value that, I think they should consider um, maybe other places to live. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Povkovich. I live at 219 Golf Terrace, and I don't know if this was uh, mentioned already, but the golf course has also done this wonderful ecological plan. I mean, it's really spectacular. It's so we can plant natives and keep everything, um, all the water where it really should be in the wetlands, and it would be a real shame to have some of that plan displaced. It's just, it, it's really flowed. It's been really important, and um, in addition to the to the golf, they've actually put the eco plan in place first and then build the golf course on top of it. That's how important the ecological aspect of this has been. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Raphael Jacoby. I'm at 201 Golf Terrace. Uh, I'm another parent of the children that play there and our kids play with uh, Eric's kids and Laura's kids almost every day. Um, when they need a place to go, like they don't even have to go to Maple Park. They can just go through their backyards. We live across the street. They can go through their backyards onto the golf course. They set up soccer nets. They play pickup games there. As they get older, they're going to be able to do more and more stuff like that. And it's really amazing that those of us whose children have grown up there. My children, I moved there when I had a, uh, a seven-week-old. And to have that space for them to just go out and play safely, sort of in an age where we uh, get chastised for letting our children walk their dogs, uh, um, this is a place where we can just, on the cul-de-sac, let them go and know that they're going to be safe and they're going to be totally fine. Um, and they can just pop back into one of the neighbor's houses if there's an issue. So um, I also think that having that issue, as uh, the commissioner pointed out, of public roads on either side of the houses of my neighbors will decrease the property value of pretty much everybody on the cul-de-sac. And you'd have to show me some convincing math to say that the, uh, the tax revenues of the new properties would offset that. Um, wouldn't for us individually, but in the grand scheme of things. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Mark Vaughn. I'm from Evanston. I have two questions. Uh, was Senator Cullerton an initial investor in this parcel, or was he brought in later as a way to spearhead this through the, the political process uh, question? The other question is, when the parcel was first purchased, it was landlocked, and so probably it was bought at a discount because the fact it was landlocked. Was there an easement at some time that allowed people, to, uh, that allowed some sort of egress in and out, or was the hope that uh, some sort of easement would be created and then that would raise the value of the parcel that was previously landlocked? That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, 
My name is Robert Shannon. I live at 2136 Beechwood, and I play golf at Canal Shores often. You know, one of the charms of a course is that it is such a wonderful community resource. There are indeed dog walkers, there are runners, there are children, and it all works perfectly with the golf course. There's no conflict, there's no problem. And um, I'm afraid this um, development, proposed development of the 10th hole would defeat that purpose and the resource very badly. But I very much hope the development does not go through. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening. My name is Mary Nala Shantz. Thank you uh, for those who replied to my email. I appreciate it. Um, uh, we're new residents to the village of Omet. Uh, we live on 103 Garrison Avenue. We moved about three months ago. Um, we love it because of the surroundings, and that was what sold us on it. Great schools, but we come from an area that had great schools as well, so it wasn't, that wasn't the big selling point. It was the nature and the activities and all the things that we have access to right now. And, you know, I'm a golfer. <laughs> I haven't golfed in Canal Shores yet. I haven't had the time. We're still unpacking. But, um, you know, my kids, my dogs, everybody's used that area. And it would be very unfortunate if that 10th hole, which happens to be <coughs> one that I drive past every day because that's on my way to work, um, would just be pavement. I, I, really unfortunate. And, you know, I'm only a couple of blocks down, but I would feel very b sad for, you know, these folks who live right on that, you know, property because we all use it and it's great and it would be most unfortunate if it were not there. So uh, please consider that when you're casting your votes or however you do these things because I don't know too much about politics. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Chris Carey. I'm an Evanston resident. I'm also the president of the Canal Shores uh, Board. Uh, I think Carl spoke pretty clearly about our position on this. I just would like to, and actually the neighbors as well, um, we have spent, uh, uh, w the history of the course is that we reconstituted the board sometime about nine years ago, and we started looking at the course again. And we did... Um, realize the importance of the ecological um, aspects of the property. Um, we then paid over $50,000 to have an um, ecological master plan developed for the property with a focus on habitat restoration and bird migration. Um, we are part of the Illinois Coastal Zone, and we were able to get a grant from um, the state of Illinois for an IDNR for this grant. I think the biggest thing that um, we object to is we're, we're familiar with Mr. Keefe. He's, he has been looking for a way to get access to his property, but we really cannot afford to lose this part of our property. We're a small, compact golf course. If you talk to golfers, they decry the course sometimes because it is narrow and hard to play. There are trees in the way. Um, I think people will have noticed over the last few years that we have really been... Um, through independent efforts and fundraising, uh, bringing the level of the course up. Um, the greens, the fairways are much improved. We've bought new equipment. We, um, as a community, in both in Evanston and Wilmette, have invested a lot of our time and energy to bring this property back and, and continue to keep it as a community asset. And I think this um, easement uh, and the way they're going about trying to get the easement and then the taking of our land and no, um, uh, and just the loss of it, um, and then the impact on the uh, land around it and in Isabella Woods um, would be very detrimental to this community and the course itself. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Christine Frola, and I live at 2801 Girard, which is would be in Wilmette, except that it isn't. It's the north side of Isabella, but right on the golf course. And the golf course is one of the great blessings of our neighborhood for all the reasons that all these neighbors have talked about. Um, and I also would like to 
echo the, the people who have talked about the taking of public lands that are bestowing public goods on all comers uh, for private interests and particularly to emphasize the neighbor who said or, uh, that there is a house for sale at the bottom of a street that exists. If the developer wants access, why not negotiate that possibility rather than propose taking a big strip of land out of public land, which is green space, which cleans the air, which provides refuge for the birds, which uh, offers children a healthy place to grow up. We need all of that that we can possibly preserve. We should not be allowing uh, public lands to be diminished uh, uh, for later generations, uh, especially not for uh, what seems to me a frivolous reason when there is another way to do this for the developer. Uh, so it seems to me from what I hear uh, that there's a conflict between um, an effort to get this done at public expense uh, when it really ought to be done at private expense if it is done at all. And I am with um, all the people who say, let's not do it at all. Let's crowdfund it and buy it at the assessed value. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right, I think we are done with comments for this evening. Thank you very much for everyone that spoke. We will be discussing this matter a little bit later, so you'll hear that in a bit. Um, next on our agenda is the approval of the voucher list. Um, yes, let me get to that. <laughs> I'd like to move to approve the voucher list <clears throat> in the amount of $1,648,988.68, a copy of which is to be attached to and become a permanent part of the minutes of this meeting. I'll second that. Are there any comments or questions on the voucher list? Hearing none, may we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Pelleton? Yes. Commissioner Olvani? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. The voucher list is approved. Thank you. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is the executive director's report. Thank you. I will be as brief as possible because people are not here to hear me speak. <laughs> um, we started our budget process this evening and the meeting prior to this at the Facilities Operations Committee. Uh, our budgets will uh, continue to be presented at committee meetings throughout the month of October into the first half of November. In mid-November, the full board will come together at a committee of the whole meeting to review the capital projects for next year and beyond. And then again, the committee of the whole will reconvene in December to review the entire budget that had already been reviewed in segments rolled up into one package. Um, looking forward on your agenda, the various agenda items you have underneath the financial planning and policy report, we have a couple of bond ordinances. Um, here with us tonight is Eric Anderson from Piper Joffrey, who is our financial advisor, who will walk us through the details of those items. Under unfinished business, as a continuation of last month's discussion about stormwater management, uh, there is an agenda item. I have very little to update in regards to that other than uh, we have been working on an agreement between uh, Burke Engineering, hired by the Village of Wilmette, and Woodhouse Tanucci, who is our architect engaged on the Gilson Beach House project to help facilitate some of the discussions regarding space allocation uh, and future uses and some conceptual thought process and planning. Um, other than that, uh, no new news to report on stormwater. Then uh, under new business you have a resolution uh, regarding the uh, easement requests made by Cook County of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Um, in there you will see references to the Office of the Independent Inspector General's report. That is a report dated April 13, 2018, and the specific case is IIG 17-0200. Um, some of that wording was incorporated into the resolution by our legal counsel. Um, and that is for your consideration this evening. Uh, furthermore, another development on this topic as of this morning, our legal counsel sent to the General Counsel of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District a letter stating that based on the wording of the Inspector General's report, 
uh, you know, saying that this is intended to be a publicly or a privately funded and maintained road, that the language within our lease that uh, was cited by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District that said we would not have a vote on the easement, we don't believe is applicable in this circumstance any longer, and that this board, by way of lease language, would have a vote on the easement if the MWRD grants it. And that concludes mm -hmm. my report. Thanks. So just so all the commissioners know, we have um, this under new business later, so we can have a more of a discussion at that time sure. regarding that, so we can kind of move through things. All right. Uh, any other questions for Steve regarding executive director? Okay. Uh, next up, we will have committee reports. First on our agenda is the Lakefront Committee. All right. Um, the Lakefront Committee met on Monday, October 1st, and we discussed uh, there were two primary issues that were on the agenda, the, the lakefront project and the status of that, as well as uh, a proposal to do some work on the bird habitat in the area around it. Um, as far as the lakefront project, um, the sailors, uh, the people on Sailing Beach had an issue uh, with parking because we're, uh, as part of the construction process, tearing up the parking lot. And um, they had a an October 14th deadline for boat removal, so they were interested in being able to uh, park down there, um, and we've made uh, um, arrangements for that. Um, and initially, we thought that we might not be able to accommodate them all the way through to the 14th, but because of uh, the permit process, pr the protracted permit process, um, we, that prevented uh, the complete parking lot demolition from occurring. So the sailors are good. Um, and Jerry Ulrich gave us a, an update on the construction. The footings for the new buildings have been poured. Uh, the pilings have been put into place uh, for the, the deck. Um, and uh, trees have been cut down that affect the entrance views um, and the parking lot construction. Um, and the parking lot at this point is mostly torn up. And I've been walking my dog past it on just about a daily basis, so watching what goes on. And um, I don't know if the big piles of sand are the precursor to the dunes or just big piles of sand, but they're much bigger than I anticipated. And so, um, but that would be a good thing. Um, as far as the bird habitat, um, we had a, a uh, resident uh, and some concerns voiced um, by, as she's a neighbor of the project, um, she was concerned about being informed and having an opportunity to discuss any additional plantings in the bird habitat prior to any work being done there. Um, there was concern voiced by the commissioners about the cost and the types of the approximately 3,000 additional plants that had been uh, um, slated to be um, planted, as well as the timing um, as it's prior to uh, or in the midst of our construction project. Um, uh, there, another commissioner voiced concern about um, mission creep and the proposal to uh, um, expand bird habitat plantings to area outside of the 10 previously approved planting beds. Um, so uh, given those concerns, um, we resolved that um, the o only weeding would be done at this time. That was this past Monday, Columbus Day. Um, and that staff would gather the requested information about the additional plants in advance of next October, um, which we understand would be the next best planting time, um, so that interested members of the community and the committee members can review it. Um, to me, the, this uh, particular incident uh, emphasizes the need to complete a landscaping plan for Gilson as soon as we can, um, and I believe that will be a subject of our discussion during our capital project um, budget discussions during the committee of the whole meetings next month. Um, and Holly had lots of good things to say about uh, what was going on down there, and um, she is very happy with the construction manager who's in place. Um, and October 14th is the deadline to get your boats out or pay winter storage. Um, and so that's my report. Any questions for the Lakefront Committee? Um, I just want to make one comment to everybody. There is a live feed of the construction process down at the lakefront that you can go onto our website and watch the exciting uh, destruction and rebuilding of the beach house and parking lot if you would like to, to do that. So kind of exciting. Uh, next up on our committee reports is the Facility Operations Committee. Uh, okay. The, uh, like Steve said, the Facilities Committee met tonight before this meeting. The meeting was solely focused on uh, the budgets for pool, ice, tennis, and paddle. 
we made one small change to the 2019 paddle capital transfer amount. Um, and otherwise, we just had some questions and discussion about all those areas which have performed really well in 2018. And we will present that, uh, the 2019 proposed budget at the Committee of the Whole meeting on December 5th, I believe that's the date. Thank you. Any questions for the Facilities Operations Committee? Hearing now, we'll move along to Parks and Rec. Uh, Parks and Rec met on September 17th. Um, uh, Jerry Ulrich gave us a presentation on the final Langdon design, and in fact, work has actually begun uh, in Langdon. Uh, there's still access to the beach, kind of a narrow path, uh, but, uh, but work and, and is anticipated to complete this fall. Um, it was a, a blessedly quiet uh, Parks and Rec committee meeting after we've had some uh, pretty long ones uh, recently, but next month, uh, we're looking forward to a, a K Nature Center update, and we'll be starting on the budget process. Any questions for Parks and Recreation Committee? Thank you. Uh, on to golf operations. Okay, um, golf met on September 15th, uh, and <clears throat> a couple things that were discussed there, um, probably in no particular order. The one of the major items that was discussed is last year we went through a pretty exhaustive uh, business planning process uh, and we came up with a plan to at our next meeting which is in a week or so to um, take a look at how we did on that plan of executing that plan and where we felt short and where we um, met our goals and and then once we go through that process then we'll come up with our own budget uh, but we want to review the, the, the outcome of the business plan before we do that. A um, couple other quick items uh, as well. Um, the summer was pretty good uh, at the golf course. September's off to a little bit of a slow start, or was off to a slow start at the time. Um, one metric that we've been keeping an eye on that I've mentioned in the past is our revenue per round. Um, and it was inquired at that meeting why is it that we're having a, a more lucrative per round number? And we were told by uh, the general manager that um, the use of golf carts um, we, uh, increases our revenues per round, and that's a helpful feature. Um, we've also had a number of outings over the course of the last um, few weeks. Um, and last but not least, we dis did talk about our finances through the end of August, uh, and uh, although our revenues were decreased a little bit, our expenses were even further decreased, which is a pretty good indication of better management overall um, by, the, by the golf course staff, and that was our meeting. Thank you. Any questions for the golf committee? Thank you. We will move along to financial planning and policy committee. In, in uh, Commissioner Anderson's absence, I'm going to give the Financial Policy Planning and Policy Committee report. Um, bear with me. I only found out about this at about three hours. Three hours ago. Yeah, three you need hours. help. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the big issues, uh, as, as was indicated earlier, uh, Eric, Jeffrey, or, or Eric Anderson of Piper Jeffrey is here to discuss um, uh, issuance of some bonds. Um, the district intends to issue $2 million in limited park bonds. These are non-referendum bonds. Uh, we have the ability to, to issue uh, a certain amount of them, depending on how many have already been issued, um, at a tax exempt status, status every three years. Um, the purpose of doing this is to ensure that um, our, we're able to do the work at Gilson <coughs> um, and um, without dipping um, below our $4 million um, targeted reserve for uh, our, our reserve fund balance. Um, even with the addition of this $2 million in new debt, um, the aggregate or total debt level for the district will decrease significantly at the end of 2018, 2020, and 2021. Um, and that's a, a good sign, a good indication that the, the district is doing a good job of prudent, prudently handling its debt. Um, in addition, uh, we're looking at refunding or the possible refunding of $4.75 million of um, previously issued park bonds. These are series 2009 bonds. 
um, the idea being that uh, we have an opportunity to do this at this time, um, and if interest rates are favorable, um, we. Uh, when we first discussed it, we uh, saw a potential savings of $84,000 um, that may have changed subsequently um, as interest rates change. Um, so we tried to move this, uh, anticipating that, we tried to move this process forward as quickly as possible. So we uh, um, had at our September 12th general board meeting, uh, Bond Issuance Notification Act, it's a uh, hearing, a uh, BINA hearing. Um, it's essentially just uh, an opportunity for people to come and speak about it um, and let us know what their their feelings were about it. Um, so we are trying to move that process forward as quickly as possible. Um, and um, I don't know if we would like to have Eric speak about it um, or if you just want to have him answer questions, if there are any questions. Um, but. I, Commissioner Abbott, do you have a question? Well, I will have a question. So at our uh, financial uh, planning policy meeting, when we talked about, the, it's the second bond issuance, uh, that $4 million worth of refinancing to pick up some savings based on interest rates. And it, as Commissioner Pelton said, at that time we were looking at 84000 but it's variable. And that was a trigger that we felt was probably, it was worthwhile to pursue. I don't want to. But we do lose some ability to do this again, so we have to be careful about picking the right time. Is this, what is the savings projections at this point? What, is, what has changed? So since we met on August the 27th and introduced that opportunity to the Finance Committee, we have seen interest rates increase. Really since Labor Day, interest rates have increased. Which is bad uh, for us which to is bad save money by refunding. Which is bad refunding bonds, right. right. 2009 bonds were funded to 2001 and 2 bonds, and we saved $986,000 on that particular refunding. We thought this would be another opportunity to save $84,000, and we had to wait uh, due to some technical tax designation considerations. Unfortunately, since that time, we've seen interest rates increase, and at this point, we're about a break even. Very sensitive to interest rate movements, especially in the near term. And we've seen those near term interest rates increase. So, before you this evening is the consideration of two ordinances. One is the refunding ordinance, and at this point, we would say we would ask that the board adopt it, and we'll hold this in reserve. And if, in the event that interest rates do move favorably, we'll be ready to seize upon it and take advantage of the, the movement. Uh, if it doesn't, then it just remains on the side for a period of six months, after which then we would come back to the Board of Commissioners and indicate same and ask if you would like to, to revisit the, the ordinance. So again, but it's, we get one shot at this, right? Correct. Okay. What would be a favorable threshold? Like, what do you consider? Well, these, this reduces uh, the tax levy for those particular bonds since they're referendum approved bonds from their original origin. And so this would be a dollar for dollar decrease in taxpayers' uh, tax bills. So they would say pass on to the taxpayers. That's correct. Right, but so you were saying like 84000 a month or so ago, and now we're kind of at a break even. At we're what at a break what, even, right. What point do you think? consider it favorable to go back? Is it $100,000? Is it like? Well, certainly 84 was, was, yeah. was attractive. Is 50? <laughs> it, 50 becomes about the threshold that you okay. may want to consider. That was the threshold. Know that beginning on December the 1st, 2018, when the bonds are callable, every day that passes, uh, we're paying about 3.2% on those bonds. Okay. And so that's a very low rate to start off with. And so if interest rates continue to increase and the Fed is expected to raise rates on December the 18th and 19th, we, we might just unfortunately not just be able to take advantage it. of this. Okay. So I continue to have conversation with uh, your finance director, Holloway, and update him as to the status of what's going on relative to the marketplace. And those can be conversations that then get held to the fi finance committee and then up to the full board for recommendation. Okay. But what the parameters ordinance does is it allows us to step into the market if there is a market dislocation that's favorable. Now today we had a, uh, a difficult day in the equity market. Normally, bonds rally, meaning bond rates come down. We didn't see that today. Hmm. So perhaps um, this is just a single day, 
but that's why the parameters ordinance goes into place so that we can continue to monitor it and then take advantage of it when those market conditions and if those market conditions become favorable. Okay. So let's say that we, we reach fifty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of savings and it is your judgment that we should go ahead and, and act. What then would trigger the, you know, obviously you have to call somebody where that's, you're not that's gonna, correct. So how what, what would be so We'll uh, authorize parameters this, ordinance. assuming we authorize this, then what's the, what's the trigger point for, uh, for Right, us? so then uh, there are three desig designated officials or delegates sure. that then are charged with approving the financing. So it doesn't have to come to the full board at one of your board meetings, which the conditions might change by the time that board meeting occurs. Sure. So it would be uh, the designated officials that we have are Mr. Anderson, as well as your executive director, and as well as your, and he's also the secretary, and as well as your treasurer. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. And I would say it's unfortunate, who knows what the interest rates are gonna do, but it's, uh, it, we chose, I believe, you gave us several different scenarios at that August 27th meeting, and we chose the most aggressive one mm -hmm. in terms of trying to pursue this as quickly as we possibly could. Uh, but there are uh, rules and regulations that we have to follow, and one of them was that we needed to have that BINA hearing, and we needed to have a couple of weeks notification, I believe it is, prior to the BINA hearing so that uh, any interested parties could come and address the, the, the board. Um, so um, we, we did what we could, um, and uh, hopefully interest rates will change and we'll be able to achieve some more savings. But 3.2% interest is a very good interest rate, um, and if we can't achieve any additional savings beyond that, um, I don't think we should be terribly disappointed because that's a, a, a good rate to be sitting on. It is, and, and we still are moving forward with the $2 million funding. And at this point, uh, we're under the direction of the district, but we do have those papers ready to distribute to potential buyers, and we can enact that particular financing aside from the refunding bonds and at least get that portion done. We, we wanted to combine them for some efficiencies, uh, but at this point, it looks like that efficiency uh, won't necessarily uh, be able to be enacted. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Anderson? Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have a? I, ha I have some more uh, in the second quarter financials uh, re reviewed. Um, some revenue categories were lagging behind the expected results um, and the factors uh, for the following factors. The tax levy, um, the district received a reduced tax levy of uh, reduced by $134,000 uh, because Cook County determined that our submission um, exceeded their, their limiting rate. And this is a mystery that we're trying to figure out. Um, but. Um, it's, it's something where we make a request and then Cook County comes back to us and tells us what they have determined. And if we could figure out what the formula was or they were willing to share it or something like that, we could do a better job of it. Unfortunately, it, it has this particular impact on us where um, whatever it is that we levy um, may not be what we get. And generally it's not, generally it is reduced in some way. Um, fee revenue was reduced by a reduction in camp revenue. Um, and in ice, tennis, and training programs, revenue at fitness. But uh, overall, the net surplus exceeded the expected results by $537,000 as of June 2018. So um, much like golf, um, even though we're, we're not getting quite the revenue that we're expecting, our um, expenses have decreased um, enough so that we have a, a net surplus. Um, uh, the committee uh, was looking at the tax levy um, and potential tax levy. Uh, last year, the district received a, a um, 2.1 percent, uh, or CPI was 2.1 percent in 2016, plus approximately 1 percent, and that was a result of new development buildings in the village were met, um, minus, of course, the $134,000. We discussed how staff could m try and become more proficient in requesting tax dollars for any new development, but um, it's, it's quite a puzzle. Um, I'm not sure that we'll be able to achieve that. Um, this, uh, the committee has directed staff to request for this uh, 2017, because it's always a year in arrears, 
uh, to CPI is 2.1 percent plus a 0.8 percent in uh, um, levy um, for 2000. So th that 2018 tax levy will be presented to the full board at the December meeting um, and discussed then. And that is all I am going to say about. Do you have meeting. any? Uh motions that you'd like to make? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, I do. <laughs> that, that I, I'm, I'm dropping the lead here. It's all good. The most important parts. Uh, I have two motions. The first is uh, uh, move to approve bond ordinance 2018-0-6, an ordinance providing for the issue of not to exceed $2,050,000 general obligation limited park bonds, series 2018-A, for park purposes and for the payment of expenses incident thereto providing for the levy of a direct annual tax to pay the principal and interest on said bonds and authorizing the sale of said bonds to the purchaser thereof as recommended by the Financial Planning and Policy Committee. Second. Um, and just so everybody knows, this is something that um, as a government agency, we are allowed to issue the bonds every a certain number of years. And <coughs> this is kind of a compilation of six years together to help us fund our lakefront project. Are there any comments or questions? May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Pelleton? Yes. Commissioner Olvani? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Thank you. Uh, in that case, I have a second motion to move to approve bond ordinance 2018-0-7, an ordinance providing for the issue of not to exceed 4,900,000 dollars in general obligation refunding park bonds series 2018 B for the purpose of refunding certain outstanding bonds of the park district for the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal of an interest on said bonds authorizing and directing the execution of an escrow agreement in connection with the issue of said bonds and authorizing the sale of said bonds to the purchaser thereof as recommended by the Financial Planning and Policy Committee. Second. Um, again, this is just refinancing old bonds that we had issued a long time ago just to get a better rate. If the rates were to come down and it would be favorable for us, we would give action to go ahead and do that. So any other questions, comments? May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Abbott? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Palatin? Yes. Commissioner Olvani? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Wolf? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Thank you. Next on our agenda is unfinished business. We have a stormwater project that the village is currently looking at um, completing and possibly using some of our parks to do that. Um, do you have an update for us? The only other thing I don't think I touched on was at the last meeting, uh, this board had asked to organize a committee of the whole meeting specific for this topic. The efforts we made to do that uh, we couldn't get all seven together before Commissioner Anderson went out of town. He's still out of town. When he returns in the next couple of days, we will again try and schedule a meeting. Are there any other comments or questions, discussion um, on this? Well, the staff is engaging Woodhouse Tanucci, a fine, a fine firm, um, in order for land planning. Uh, you've received a proposal for that. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if, if you just take a look at the proposal absolutely I was going to send it along we actually made a slight adjustment to it this morning sure. to spe specify um, explicitly that Woodhouse Tanucci while being uh, paid for under a contract with Burke Engineering is the agent and representation of the Park District in working on behalf of the Park District and not the engineers so everyone's aware this would be another layer of eyes looking at what's going on and what potentially would be going on in our parks Sure, and then uh, we, as we discussed at the last board meeting, we we're looking at uh, a civil engineering consultant mm -hmm. who would advise us, mm -hmm. and that uh, any progress. Do we have retained that? Gewalt Hamilton on that? Oh, okay. Could you pass that on as well? Sure. Is there any other discussion on this? I don't know that there's much else to talk about at this point until more conversations are had. Yeah. That's my question. Okay, moving along, we are under new business. We have um, a resolution regarding this easement. Um, I'm not sure there's a lot to be discussed amongst the commissioners. Is there anybody that would like to start the discussion? Okay, I, um, 
With great pleasure, I would move to approve Resolution 2018-R-1, a resolution in regard to the Cook County easement request of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District on property leased by the Wilmette Park District. I'll second, I'll second that. Um, with, the, with that um, motion and second, um, I'd ask uh, Executive Director Steve Wilson to read the resolution, please. These are always fun. Bear with me. A resolution registering formal opposition to the request of Cook County for an easement for roadway purposes across property owned by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago and leased by the Wilmette Park District. Whereas, on May 6, 1965, the Metropolitan Sanitary, Sanitary District of Greater Chicago Sorry, that's rain. <laughs> now, now known as the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, a municipal corporation, MWRD, leased certain real property located along the northeast right-of-way of the North Shore Channel between Maple Avenue and Isabella Street, the premises, to the Wilmette Park District, Park District for park and recreational purposes, the lease, and whereas... The lease specifically contemplates that a portion of the premises would be subleased to the Evanston Community Recreation Association, now known as the Evanston Wilmette Golf Course Association, an Illinois not-for-profit corporation, the association, and used for seven holes of the 18-hole Peter N. Jans Golf Course, now known as the Canal Shores Golf Course, and whereas the lease has been amended from time to time and the current term is set to expire on May 31st, 2032 and whereas on August 28, 2018 John Yonan, Superintendent of Cook County's Department of Transportation and Highways sent Christopher Murray, MWRD's Head Assistant Attorney a letter requesting a 75 year non-exclusive easement over and across a portion of the premises a copy of Yonan's letter is attached here to as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by reference and whereas the requested easement depicted on aerial map included in Exhibit A attached here to is 61 feet wide and 300 feet long and extends south from Maple Avenue <clears throat> along the western boundary of the premises, the easement, and whereas, pursuant to you, Yonan's letter, the easement, quote, is for the construction, operation, maintenance, rehabilitation of an access road to reach private property owned by the Key Family Trust, end quote, and whereas, the Key Family Trust began acquiring the landlocked property in question over the last several decades and has been attempting to obtain access to and develop said property to no avail ever since, including a similar request for an easement submitted by Cook County's Department of Transportation and Highways to MWRD in April 2017 for property leased to the City of Evanston and, whereas, Cook County's Office of the Independent Inspector General, IIG, initiated an investigation into Yonan's easement request, quote, after receiving a complaint alleging improper motive, parentheses bribery, involving Department of Transportation and Highways, DTH officials, when they sought to acquire a parcel of land from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, MWRD, to build a road for the sole benefit of a private land developer at the behest of an Illinois state senator, end quote, the IIG report. A copy of the IIG report is attached here to as Exhibit B and is incorporated herein by reference. And... Whereas the IIG report concluded that the investigation failed to support the allegations of improper motive based in large part on representations from Cook County officials that its, quote, intention was only to request an easement so that the road could be built in order to generate property tax revenue for the county, all of which was contingent on an intergovernmental agreement that would clarify that a private entity would own the road and be responsible for funding, building, and maintaining that road, end quote, and that, quote, Cook County's involvement was required due to MWRD's bylaws which restrict the grant of easements to private parties, end quote, and whereas, Prior to the publication of the IIG report, Cook County made numerous representations indicating that the access road would be a public road owned and maintained by Cook County. And whereas Article 8-1A of the Illinois Constitution, Illinois Constitution 1970, Article 8, Section 1 provides that, quote, public funds, property, or credit shall be used only for public purposes, end quote. And whereas based on the foregoing including the findings in the IIG report concluding that the access road in question will be privately owned and maintained, the Park District's Board of P Park Commissioners, Park Board, has determined that the easement will serve a purely private purpose. 
will impermissibly interfere with the park district's use of the premises for park and recreational purposes generally and the association's use of the premises for a golf course specifically and is not in the best interest of the park district, its residents, and the general public. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Board of Park Commissioners of the Wilmette Park District, Cook County, Illinois, as follows. Section 1. The preamble of this resolution is hereby incorporated in its entirety by reference in and made a part of this resolution as if fully set forth herein. Section 2. The Park Board affirmatively registers and affirms its opposition to the easement request submitted by Cook County over and across a portion of the premises as detailed in the letter dated August 28, 2018, attached hereto as Exhibit A. Section 3, the Park District's <laughs> Executive Director or his designee is hereby authorized and directed to send a certified copy of this resolution along with any emails or other correspondence received from residents regarding this matter to the MWRD's Board of Commissioners and the Cook County Department of Transportation and Highway, Highways to appear and present the Park District's formal opposition to the easement request on the Park District's behalf at any and all public hearings or other meetings related to the easement request and to take any and all such further actions deemed necessary and appropriate to carry out or effectuate this resolution. Section 4, the resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its adoption as provided by law, adopted this 10th day of October 2018 by the affirmative majority vote of the members of the Board of Park Commissioners as follows. Thank you, Th thank you Steve. <laughs> um, welcome. There's, there's one or two aspects of this that I wanted to at least get out um, for discussion. Um, the first um, is, and a couple of comments are made about um, having a representative of our board um, or staff to attend an MWRD when the, uh, meeting when this is on the agenda. I would strongly uh, encourage us to, you know, to make that happen, um, and I'd leave it to, to you, uh, Madam President, to figure out, you know, who that appropriate person would be. Um, the second thing that I wanted to say with regard to this is that uh, in my seven years um, on the park board, I've never been in a situation where I see, received 100% uh, of correspondence in opposition to something <laughs> or on one side of something. Um, every time there's always a different, you know, there's two different sides to every story. In this case, uh, I think our constituents have spoken very clearly uh, about what they expect us to do, and I think that this resolution does a very nice job of, of stating um, our position. Uh, and then the one last thing I would ask Steve, which is really a question, um, um, earlier there was some question about some of the um, specifics of the rev resolution. The author of this is, is our attorney, right? So we're, we right. feel very comfortable with the way that this is phrased in terms of which document is referred to and the like, correct? Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Yes. I would just like to echo your sentiments that receiving so many correspondence in opposition to this I think is unheard of when there's mm -hmm. usually a, both sides to an issue. Um, so it just speaks volumes to the, the passion around the opposition um, to this project, so. Um, I would yes, like go ahead. To say a few things. Um, so, y yes, I, I oppose this. I'm going to vote in favor of the resolution. I just want to point out a few things. We've received notification not only from Canal Shores and their board in opposition, and tonight we heard from Go Green. We've also heard from Central Street Neighborhood Association, Citizens Greener Evanston, and Friends of Isabella Woods, each of those organizations who represent a considerable uh, number of, lo of local residents. We've also heard from people who aren't even local. Uh, we've heard from out-of-state people on this issue. The uh, extent of uh, the correspondence that we've received on this, not only in numbers but also in reach, has been uh, quite astounding. Um, I do want to make a few points. Um, first off, uh, MWRD doesn't have a recreational mandate, and so they depend upon let me speak, sorry, uh, they, MWD does not have a recreational mandate, so what they do in terms of their lands, they lease lands to uh, government agencies that do. Uh, and so they're leasing to the Wilmette Park District. Uh, they are, the expectation is, is that we will take care of that land for recreational purposes. For the past 100 years, certainly this organization and the, and the city of Evanston have determined 
and I see no change in that, that a golf course is the best recreational use. And I want to say that I've admired Canal Shores recreational use in terms of not just golfers, but how they open up the golf course for everybody to use. Um, and so it's not restrictive, but actually very open, and I think they're kind of pretty unique in that regard for a golf course. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth as to whether or not this is a public load or a private load, and that's why this uh, this uh, internet uh, this council. I forget what you call it. Steve? Independent no. Inspector In General. Exactly. And why, that is why it's being referenced, because we really can't get a straight answer as to whether or not this is a public road or a private road uh, that's going to be built. And in fact, they're referencing, uh, they've referenced an intergovernmental agreement that, of course, they didn't provide to us. And so it, we're really left in the dark as to what is the intent here. It seems that, to me, to my ears, that... Um, whether or not it's a public or private road depends on how, which interpretation they wish to use at that particular moment as to whether or not they need to ask us because we're getting people from Cook County saying, no, it's not, it's going to be a private road, which our lawyers, and I agree with them, say that we would have the right to block such a move, and that's why the resolution is worded uh, in this way. But I also admire the fact that the resolution does state that uh, we're in opposition to the easement request pure and simple, uh, not just whether or not it's a private road or not. It does state we are opposed to the easement. Um, so I just wanted to point out these things. I didn't feel like I was debating, but I do want these people that are here and um, wanted to make a few comments about what this resolution does and why it's been drafted in such a way. Any further comments? May we have a roll call vote? And just so everybody knows, voting yes would approve this resolution of opposition. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just so making sure. So if you're voting yes, yes you're, yes, you're I'm opposed. Yes, you're, now. Uh, yes, yes, yes I'm now. opposed to the easement. Yes, so okay. that's a vote yes is yeah, in support of the resolution which opposes the easement. Okay. Got it. Roll call, please. <laughs> Commissioner Abbott. Yes, I'm, uh, I uh, support the resolution. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Palatin. Yes. Commissioner Olvani. Yes. Commissioner Shelley. Yes. Commissioner Wolf. Yes. Resolution is approved. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> I believe that is all for our meeting. Um, last thing on our agenda is an adjournment. May have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you.